All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachak Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect of the nation of Israel. Uh, it's going to be a response to the video that the uh, Elder Ariyala did on uh, GMS Dallas in Class 3 titled Disciplined versus Impulse Driven Life. <clears throat> okay? And uh, the scripture that he started off with uh, was in uh, uh, Proverbs uh, chapter uh, 25. Okay? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and read it here. Let me go ahead and pull it. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28. It says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Okay. And uh, you know, that was uh one of the one of the first words that kind of popped in my mind when I when I heard uh when I read this scripture, you know, and I tried to think of uh, you know, uh, not being I'm sorry, being impulse driven. Uh, you know, the word came and it was hasty, you know, you can't, uh, uh, you know, have a spirit of just trying to get everything done with the quickness. Okay. Cause that's the spirit of, that Esau has. He doesn't have any patience. All right. Um, so you have to have rule over that, over your spirit, you know, which requires patience. And, uh, you know, that word rule in the Hebrew, I looked it up, uh, in the Hebrew is ma'ai tazar, ma'ai tazar. Okay, uh, which means uh, restraint or control. And, uh, you know, we're closing out here on, on the Day of Atonement. And it's, uh, it's important to, to, to highlight that, you know, when, when, we're, when we're meditating upon these things of restraint and of control. Because the Day of Atonement isn't the only day that we have restraint and control over, our, over ourselves. Okay, it's supposed to be every day where we practice that and we meditate on uh, uh, gaining more control over our spirit, okay, ruling our spirit and, and being uh, uh, being spiritual, you know, throughout the entire year, of course. So, but the Day of Atonement is, is a day specifically where we uh, reflect, okay, on uh, the things that we need to get better at through the spirit. And so, uh, uh, Abba Zai, this is going to be an edifying lesson. Just wanted to uh, kind of go uh, based, off, based off of that premise, all right? So, I'm going to read the scripture again in uh, Proverbs 25 and 28. It says, he, hath no rule, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Okay, makes me think of uh, Jericho uh, during the time of uh, uh, Joshua, okay, when our people marched around Jericho uh, on that seventh day and those walls came down. Matter of fact, let me see if I can just go ahead and pull it real quick. Uh, Joshua. Let me see. All right, the siege of Jericho. So this is Joshua uh, chapter 6. And all right, uh, this is Joshua chapter 6 and 12. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing uh, seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the arms I'm sorry, and the armed men went before them, but the re but the re reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. Okay, so that was uh and I'm gonna just keep reading actually it says, uh, and the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. All right, so uh you know the uh the uh, ark of the Lord amongst the men of uh was amongst the men of war and they, they circled the city one time each day for six days. Okay, in verse five, uh, 15 it says, and it came to pass on the set on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. So on the seventh day they circled the city seven times. All right, and um, let me see here. All right, so I'm gonna drop down to verse 20. Okay, it says, so the people shouted, when the priest blew with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great, with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city 
every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. So you don't want to be like that city that was utterly destroyed with the edge of the sword. Okay, because, you're, because your city dwells without walls. Because you could best believe Satan is trying his best to hinder and destroy you and tear down your walls of defense. But our wall of defense, as long as we have them up, cannot be penetrated by Satan. All right, uh, because, you know, the scriptures say so. That's how we fight. <laughs> That's how we fight uh, Satan, man. All right. Um, let me see. I'm just going to read this. Second Timothy chapter 2 and, uh, and uh, verse 3. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahushai Hamashiach. Okay. Uh, it says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So remember that this is a spiritual battle, that we ought not to be distracted by other things that are in the world, but uh, but only, only but this truth should be our main focus. Okay. Uh, I wanted to get that in, uh, I think it's Galatians. Oh, so like it's in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter six and uh, verse 12, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. OK, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the most high that ye may be able to withstand the evil day, having done all to stand. So that whole armor it, from from verse 14 uh, all the way down uh, to uh uh, you know, to verse 17, okay, goes uh, into those things that, is, that are necessary for us to stand fast in his truth and to defend ourselves spiritually. All right. Uh, another scripture uh, that comes to mind is, uh, is Psalms. Let's see. All right. Psalms chapter 91. And one, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power in whom I will trust. Okay, now a refuge, okay, and a fortress, man. When you think of a fortress, that's something that's fortified, all right? Fortified meaning it has walls, it has uh, things to protect the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the people that, were, that, are, that, are in, that are within those walls, okay? And so uh, we're not going to be um, uh, 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 destroyed by Satan if we have Yahweh Shai, okay, Yahweh Bashim Shai to dwell to dwell in, okay. Uh, so going back here, that's part of having a rule of your ruler over your own spirit, okay. You want to be able to uh, that that uh, uh, that my my eye tazar. You want to have that restraint and control over yourself, okay, and not be. Um, uh, impulse driven. Okay. Uh, so going on, uh, we're going to get uh, Proverbs chapter 14. Okay. This is Proverbs chapter 14. And uh, wow, this is spirit. I'm going to just read this. I'm going to read up real quick. Proverbs 14 and 26. In the fear of Yahweh is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. OK, that strong confidence is the fact that we can stand in the uh, 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 we could look at fear. All right. With boldness. I'm sorry. Look at death with boldness. OK. And not be not be fearful. The most high has not given us the spirit of fear, but of uh, but of but of strength. Roughly paraphrase. Let me get that in uh, Second Timothy. All right. Second uh, Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. All right. Um, for the most high hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. OK, so a sound mind is, is the ability to break down the scriptures properly, the ability to judge properly. OK, and uh, the spirit of the spirit of power. <laughs> that's the Holy Spirit, man. That's that spiritual power that we look for. OK, and the most high has given that to us and also of love, of course. You want to have uh, charity and, and brotherly love. You want to be appreciative for the fact that Yahweh Shai brought this uh, truth unto us. 
okay? Uh, so there's many, there's many things to, to think about, uh, not only on this day, especially on this day, but moving on forward as we continue on in uh, 2018, the year of prophecy, okay? So uh, going back to Proverbs chapter 14, verse, uh, uh, I read verse 26, uh, I want to get um, uh, verse 29, all right? So it says, uh, he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, Okay, slow to wrath, meaning you 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 not uh, 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 haste, you're not hasty. Okay, you're not impulsive, but you're slow to wrath. You're merciful. Okay, you're balanced. You think things out before you do them. Okay, that's that causes you have to have self control over your, over your mind in order to do that. Okay, um, it says he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit excelleth folly. Okay, so you're bringing uh, confusion, folly. Um, uh, meaning uh, uh, basically a, a plan around, okay, when this truth is deadly serious, man, okay? So you don't want to you don't want to make a hasty decision, or, okay, or do something without thinking about it, being impulsive, okay, because you're, you're bringing forth folly, you're excelling folly, okay? When you excel at something, that means you, you, you're good at it, okay? So you, you're bringing it forth and, you, and you're pushing it forth folly when you're, when you're being hasty, when you're not, when you're being impulsive and when you're not thinking things through. Okay, um, let me see, uh, next scripture I want to get is uh, Proverbs. Proverbs 21 and 5. It says, the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of every one that is hasty only to want. Okay, so the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. Okay, we want to be uh, diligent and we want to be disciplined enough to uh, uh, endure until the end, okay? Because we know that if we endure until the end, we're going to receive that crown of life, all right? Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down uh, with my father uh, at in his throne, okay? Uh, verse. Uh, this is uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Okay, so that goes into being disciplined. Okay, before we are able to accomplish that, we have to be disciplined. All right, the scriptures say that if uh, if we faint in the day of adversity, our strength is small. Okay, so we have to uh, be uh, be strong enough mentally minded. We have to be strong minded enough to to continue on to the day. Uh, of, of your house shives return all right let me see here so uh with that i'm going to go ahead and go to proverbs chapter 16 this page just kind of stuck together proverbs 16 and 32 all right it says he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city Okay, so those men that we just read about in Joshua chapter 6, when they took over the city of Jericho after the, after the Lord brought down those walls, okay, uh, uh, if, we, if we rule our spirit, we are, 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 are better, okay, <laughs> and we are better than that, okay? It's better to do that, to rule our spirit, than, than to take the spoils of another city, okay? Because if you don't have your uh, uh, spiritual walls up, then your city is going to be overthrown and taken down, Okay? So we have to have that spiritual defense first, all right? Not being uh, impulsive, but by being disciplined, all right? Uh, next scripture I want to get is James. All right, this is James chapter 1, verse 2. It says, uh, My brethren, count it all joy when ye uh, fall into diverse temptations, right? Because uh, this, uh, these temptations uh, cause you, uh, which uh, cause you, cause you to, uh, which cause you to suffer, requires patience, okay, to see Yahweh, uh, Yahweh Shai bring you out of those situations, okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, that was, uh, that was part of, that was part of the definition that the Elder Ariala brought out uh, when he bring, when he, when he, when he described uh, discipline, okay. Uh, teaching, suffering, and, and martyrdom, okay? So you have to be focused on 
being disciplined daily, okay, as he said in the lesson, in the video. And so uh, teaching, you know, being diligent, okay, uh, um, uh, it says suffering, okay, we're reading about that now, okay, and, 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 uh, and martyrdom, okay, which, uh, which we'll get here in a second. But this is uh, James chapter 1, uh, continuing on in verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, okay, and when you look into that word patience, it, it basically means to be able to be suffered, uh, to able to suffer, be able to suffer without being annoyed, okay, but just going through it and sucking it up. That's called girding up your loins, you see. Um, it says, uh, uh, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, okay, and eventually... Uh, you, you're not going to to want anything uh, to do with this flesh, okay? We're, we, we're getting to a point where we're spiritually abounding, especially when we're fasting. It, it, exempl it exemplifies it, okay? When, when, we, when we reflect on, uh, uh, you know, uh, receiving uh, um, receiving uh, blessings from Yahweh Hashem Yahshai and understanding from Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, we want, we want those things. We want, we want, the, we want the Lord's uh, food, <laughs> Okay, spiritual food more than uh more than more than actual food. All right, and I want to go ahead and get this precept in uh in the book of uh, Saint John. I believe it's Saint John chapter four. Yeah, this is Saint John chapter four, verse thirty one. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, "Master, eat." But he said unto them, "I have meat that ye know not of." Okay, now, uh, when the scripture says, I have meat that ye know not of, those are the words of Yehoshaphat. Okay, and now, uh, disciples were asking him to go ahead and eat. Okay, well, you know, and he, and Yehoshaphat was telling them that he already had meat. He already had food that, that, that the disciples didn't know about. Okay, verse 33, therefore said the disciples one to another, had any man brought him ought to eat? So they didn't understand that he was talking about uh, something else outside of a physical meal. Verse 34, Yehoshai uh, saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Okay, we are supposed to want to uh, 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 to eat. Um, we're supposed to want to do the work of Yehoshai Yahu more than, than really eating, man. Okay, we're supposed to want to please the Lord more than anything on earth. All right, and uh, that's the spirit that Job came in too. I'm going to get that precept. Real quick. All right, this is Job uh, chapter 23, verse 12. It says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Okay? And really, man, when you really, really get down to the nitty gritty, we are, we are supposed to want to be in the spirit more than anything you know we 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 want to <laughs> we want to we want to be in the spirit more than anything man you know the spirit had me say it twice but really uh <laughs> that's what we strive for you know we strive for perfection so um you know when, when we're in this spiritual zone okay it's important to to highlight that okay and ask you how about you shah babu shah you know Help us to want to be more spiritual. Help us to cast off the flesh. You see? I'm going to get this uh, uh, scripture here in uh, Baruch. Let's see. All right, this is Baruch chapter 4, uh, starting at verse. Let's see. Verse 25. It says, My, my, my children. Suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. For thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction, and thou shalt tread upon his neck. Okay? Like I said, this is the day that we really earnestly hope for, really wait for, okay? And, uh, you know, the thing is, you know, we, we, we are willing to suffer, okay? We're willing to be persecuted. We're willing to be martyrs for Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, okay? And so that's why we suffer patiently. Matter of fact, let me get that in, uh, get that in, uh, 
Revelation, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of the Most High, and for the testimony which they, which they held. <clears throat> and for the testimony which they held. Um, and the cry, I'm sorry, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Okay? Because, we, like I said, we, we ask you how about Shai, uh, uh to, to bring judgment forth to this place, to bring Yahweh Shai back so that he can set, uh, uh, set up his kingdom, okay, on the planet earth. You see? And so... Uh, we're going to have to, some of us are going to have to be martyred, martyrs, man. I'm going to keep reading. It says, uh, verse uh, 11, and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little while, a little season until their fellow servants, which is us down here on the planet earth. Okay. Fellow servants also, uh, and their brethren, uh, that should be killed as they as they were should be fulfilled. All right. So there's a there's a set there's a set measure, man, that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has uh, uh, for us to uh, uh, go through. Okay. Until he sends back uh, his son. Okay. Until the until the Lord comes back to redeem us. Okay. Mm. All right. So I'm gonna go back here to uh, Baruch chapter four. And verse 25, I'm going to read it again. It says, my children, suffer patiently. Okay? Suffer patiently. The wrath that has come upon you from the Most High, for thine enemy hath persecuted thee. But shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children. And cry unto Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. So the same power that brought this evil upon us is going to what? He's going to remember us. Okay. He's going to remember us and he's going to avenge us. Okay. The day, the scriptures say that the day of vengeance is in the Lord's heart. Matter of fact, let me, uh, let me get that real quick. Um, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Uh, nope, that's not it. Matter of fact, I think it's in Zephaniah. There's one, but let me see if this is Zephaniah. Let me see. Okay, no, that's another one, but I'm going to get this one. All right, this is Nahum chapter 1, uh, verse 1. The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkoshite. The Most High is jealous, and Yahweh revengeth. Yahweh revengeth, revengeth and is furious. Yahweh will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Okay, so... That's part of uh, uh, <laughs> Yahweh Shimei Shai's anger that we hope to be revealed, okay, unto these uh, unto these two third uh, Israelites, okay, unto these Edomites and unto these other nations, okay. Um, it said he reserveth wrath for his enemies, man. Matter of fact, let me get that in First uh, Peter. You see, this is First uh, Peter chapter four, and. You see, you really start at verse 12, but I'm going to get the point at verse 17. It says, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? Right? Uh, at verse 18, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? All right, the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High, man. All right, so... While we're getting chastised right now, we don't even want to think about what the the latter end of destruction is going to be for these people who uh, are, are are late to the uh, to the game, man. Okay, these people, these two thirds that aren't getting right right now, that they, they don't get it. 
they're gonna they're gonna receive the greater condemnation. They're gonna receive a, a, a more harsh punishment. Okay, verse three in Nahum chapter one verse three, the, uh, Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power, and will not acquit the and will not at all acquit the wicked. Okay, so to acquit meaning to you know basically give him a pass. The Most High not gonna give Esau a pass, man. The Most High not gonna give these two thirds a pass. Okay, so we have to be. Uh, we have to be uh, uh, disciplined in our thoughts and our judgment, okay, so that we don't, uh, you know, make the wrong decision to where the Most High takes us out, man, okay, to where we're not numbered with those who uh, uh, fell short, okay, you know, those, uh, you know, one, one, one that, 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 uh, that, uh, that, um, when I say fell short, I mean fall short of salvation, okay, okay, one that, uh, that, that quits, that gives up on this thing. We don't want to be numbered with those men. All right, I'm going to read verse 3 again, and I'm going to close it out. It says, Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Remember that scripture we read in Proverbs about being slow to anger, okay? You want to be slow to anger. You don't want to be uh, hasty and impulsive in your thoughts, okay? Because the Lord is slow to anger, okay? But that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that he, that he, uh, that he, uh, I'll say this. When, you, when you're slow to anger, okay? You're balanced, okay. You 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 you're able to to properly discern the situation and see, okay, okay. So he's gonna keep doing that, okay, all right. And then you know after a course of time, that uh that 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 case is built up on you, you 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 don't have anything to say, okay. You're absolutely guilty, all right. So while the Most High is slow to anger, we take advantage of the fact that He is, and we repent because the Lord is also merciful, okay. Um, so it says. Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. For Yahweh hath his way in the whirlwind, all right, uh, and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet, all right. So, hey, those chariots, man, are going to come with Yahweh by Shem Yahshai when he uh, uh, destroys the, the wicked, man, okay? So, those are, uh, those are things to look out for as well. Um, but, hey, Avarat Zadus this was an edifying lesson. With that, I'm going to give all praise and honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom.